Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well, it's Chetan here from Design Pilot and I am back again today with another video and in this video I'm going to be introducing you to a script that I came across a couple of months back called After Codex. Now this script is for After Effects, Premiere Pro and for Adobe Media Encoder and this script is basically used for rendering much 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 faster than your standard renderer. I'm going to be talking more about this in the entire video so without any further ado, let's get started. So here I'm on aescripts.com and uh, this is by uh, Autochroma. They make a ton of scripts which are really good and I reached out to them and I told them that I checked out their script by using the trial version and I really liked it and that I would make a review on it um, and kind of and help promote their product. So they sent me over the full version and I've been using it till date and it is fantastic. So let me just give you a brief introduction as to what After Codex is. So basically After Codex uh, helps you encode faster. So as you can see it says ProRes for Windows and ProRes is something that uh, is a codec for QuickTime and uh, Mac devices so you get the ProRes uh, on Windows it's got a fast YouTube export profile which is dedicated and optimized for YouTube videos all right it's got h.264 that which is the mp4 format inbuilt you don't have to go to media encoder every time you have to sub render something in After Effects which is pretty awesome because right now After Effects doesn't have the h.264 uh, render module installed inside After Effects you have to export it uh, you need to open up media encoder and then do and uh, render it from there which is a bit time consuming but it has H.264 and H.265. H.265 is kind of the next generation than the H.264. It's around 30, 25 to 30 percent faster than H.264. And After Effects ProRes codec, which is basically for QuickTime, renders are on average of 15 percent faster than the QuickTime, uh, the default dot .mov QuickTime preset that you have in After Effects. And as you can see, it gives you a kind of a comparison over here um, on how the After Effects codecs and the speed of the media encoder works. Now, I'll be obviously showing you guys actual render proof, which I had done for a simple project. So to give you guys more uh, information on that. Uh, so let's jump into After Effects. All right, so here I'm in After Effects and this was a simple uh, project that I made uh, for a client. So the way to start uh, rendering out is just go to composition and choose add to render queue. And uh, this is all what we get. So I'm gonna click on the output module and here in the format, as you can see, I have MOV and MP4. Now I have two versions because I missed install two version by mistake but you know it's the same anyway so i'm going to check out after effects codex.mp4 first so if i go and click on that and i go to format options right it's going to open up this uh, dialog box where i can change all the settings and the best part is as soon as i hover my mouse over it it's going to give me a list of information as you can see on the bottom and uh, a, a kind of a concept that i want to explain is this uses the x.264 encoder uh, which is similar to the h.264 codec but x.264 is same as h.264 and x.265 is same as h.265. So if I click on the codec, as you can see, I have h.264, I have h.264 YouTube upload. This is the optimized YouTube upload um, codec. And this is RGB. Not quite sure what this is. And then we have h.265, which is HVAC, which is a higher standard version of h.264. Now you could definitely use h.265, but uh, you know, do a little bit of trial and error and figure out uh, which one works better for you. But for right now, I could probably go for H.264. And when I choose that, I get three options, which I can use as a benchmark for deciding my render speed and render time. So I can I can set it as bitrate, I can set it as file size, or I can even set it to quality. So if I want to determine the file size, I can go ahead and manually change the slider to make sure that the render file doesn't exceed the size that I set. And if I go to quality, as you can see, uh, if I come over here on quality, at the bottom it says below 40% is low quality, 40 to 70% is good quality, above 70 is excellent quality. So you can definitely choose whichever you want. And uh, the speed is uh, speed is basically the render times. Now there are three different settings that you can choose for this. So if you're going for uh, anything that is above eight, which is gonna be very less quality, and but it's gonna render super fast, just to give you a preview of how it's gonna look. 
If you set it to six to seven, uh, it's gonna give you a better quality, but a much more quicker render than the eight. And if you set to zero to five, that should be your basically your final render, which you should be able to uh, export and use for the final project. So it's ready to use. So uh, I usually set it to two, which I think is kind of okay. And if you're streaming, you can check, click on this checkbox, which is gonna prepare for streaming. And as soon as you hover, it's gonna give you all the information down below for you to read. And uh, I usually keep everything the default baseline main high auto um not quite sure what those means and k and and audio uh, i just keep the settings as basics now if you go to settings over here uh this is a little bit you know just technical stuff which i don't want to explain about and the about page is nothing now if i go to h.264 youtube upload it gives you it readily sets everything for you you just have to render it out and if i go to um h.265 it's basically the same thing but obviously, as I said, mentioned, it is a newer generation of the H.264 codec. All right. So I'm going to click on cancel. And if I come here to um, aftercortex.mov and go to format options. So I've got a couple of uh, different presets over here. Now, the one which says A is alpha channel. Now, unfortunately, you cannot render alpha channel with the H.264 codec. You have to render in QuickTime. Uh, which is basically the .mov format. So we have ProRes 444 Lite, ProRes 444, and ProRes 444 um, XQ. Now, these are all different small variations. If you're doing simple motion graphics and rendering stuff, you could choose probably any of these presets, but if you are doing something very technical, something that's gonna get broadcasted on TV or something like a movie, then probably definitely you'd have to choose the one specific. I really myself have no idea the difference between these four, uh, but the only thing I know is the one which does not have the letter A is not the alpha channel, and the one which has A is the alpha channel, so it automatically selects the alpha channel and renders that out for you. So for now, I'm just gonna click on ProRes 444, and I can choose the alpha depth, which is 8-bit or 16-bit, and uh, AAC and wave, this is the normal audio. Settings remain the same and we have the about section and do. So the only thing you have to do is just go ahead and click on okay and it says custom after fix codec.moe and then select your output module and render it. Now let me show you the render time differences. All right, so I took a screenshot of a simple render that I made. So, so this one is the after codex version, which is the H.264 version, H.264 codec, I'm sorry. And the render time is just 15 seconds, all right? Now let me show you what I did it in Media Encoder. Now the reason I had to do it in Media Encoder is because, I, because After Effects doesn't have the inbuilt H.264 codec. So I had to move it to Media Encoder, which is this, and I downloaded the log file. And as you can see, uh, all the settings are the same but the encoding time is 42 seconds all right now that's a huge big fat difference so from 15 seconds i'm moving to 42 seconds now this is for the mp4 now if you want to check the quick time which is the dot mov or the prores formats um right so this one is the basic default uh, quick time dot mov one which took two minutes and 14 seconds and this one is after effect codec dot mov which is just six seconds i mean beat that this is two minutes and 14 seconds and six seconds now you might say that this depends on my system and this depends on how powerful graphics card i have and how complex the project is but that's the reason they have they, they have given you guys the free trial download that see how much how much difference it makes for you if it definitely makes a difference consider purchasing or you can just live off the trial version until the trial expires. But in my opinion, this is two minutes and 14 seconds to six seconds is just crazy. I just rendered the exact same thing with motion blur, uh, with movement, with, you know, with, with color correction, with glows. I mean, that's amazing. And let me now show you the quality between these two. All right, so I just imported both the versions. So this is the normal version and this is the after codex version. The after codex version is the one at the bottom. So uh, I'm just gonna go and make this full screen. Now if I zoom in, you can see the difference. Now, this is the after effects codex version. There is a teeny tiny 1% less quality than compared to this one. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it on your screen, but I'm able to clearly see it. Now this might be, one person less quality just because of the fact that I rendered this at 95% quality and not 100%. Now really, would this one person actually matter to you if it reduces your render times by 10%? I mean, when there's so much motion blur, people won't even recognize. Now let me now let me move into a different frame to kind of show you an example, all right? Okay, so, all right, just check this out. This is the dollar sign. Obviously, it was made in 11 3D. And I mean, I don't see much of a difference at all. I mean, when there's so much of motion blur, is this really going to make much of a difference? I really think this is really fantastic and amazing. All right, now this is with motion blur. I mean, just look at it. 
Is, can you even spot any difference? Definitely not. So this is really awesome. Now let me show you the uh, MP4 versions. All right, now these are the MP4 versions. As you can see, I have After Cortex. Okay, let's put After Cortex at the bottom. Oh, we gotta put it over here. Okay, so After Cortex is, uh, I guess, uh, on the top and uh, the normal version is the one at the bottom. All right, now let's zoom in and take a look. All right, so I'm zooming in. Now, as you can see, can you spot any difference at all? Can you spot any difference? I mean, this looks phenomenal and fantastically awesome. And I'm ready to sacrifice the one or two percent of quality over my 10 times faster render speeds. So this is really an amazing strip, which I highly recommend downloading. Now, the price for it is $89 for uh, each uh, software, which is After Effects, $89, Premiere Pro and Media Encoder. Now, if you are buying in bulk for probably a company or an organization that you work for, you get a couple of uh, discount for each separate script for the particular software. Now, I haven't tested this in Media Encoder and Premiere Pro, uh, but I'm definitely sure that the results are going to be same. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and really like this script. Uh, all the links will be down in the description to purchase the link. So don't worry, worry about that. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you have any questions or requests, let me know in the comment sections down below. Any more requests for similar uh, sh showcasing and featuring new cool scripts and products like this, let me know in the comment section and I'll definitely see you guys in my next video. So until then, take care and bye-bye.